Ender, the real people columnist for the West Ender. I'm here on the red carpet at the 2017 Leo Awards, where the best and brightest in Vancouver's dynamic film and television industry will be celebrated. Listen in as I chat with Vancouver's shining stars. How great is a series of unfortunate events? It's pretty great. Okay, so what was the best part about working on that project? Every time I went to set, I was like running around to all the different locations, and I mean, we shoot almost everything on set but they're yeah. constantly building new ones so I'm always like what is it what's the newest because they're all incredible and I always want to see everyone's newest costumes every department has the most amazing creative liberty in yeah. this show and it's very dreamy to yeah. be a part of they yeah. saw you coming like oh we got a new set Sarah's coming to see you yes yeah. yes <laughs> Just dropping by just to see the set, not even working today, you know. And I know this summer, <laughs> I mean, on your birthday, you have War for the Planet of the Apes. You have such a good memory. Oh, right You're I the best. I make it my business to know all about you, You're Sarah. like, you are like top notch. Okay, so why don't you tell me then, you know, what you learned about yourself as an actor and as a human being working on Apes? So much. It was, it, it was sort of like going back to like theater school because before we started shooting, we did like a three week ape boot camp. And we would just sit in chairs and breathe and we would just sort of develop what the intention is of how does an ape turn its head because it's very different from a human, you know, you sort of take the cerebral thing away and it's so instinctual. We're on camera right now, could I ask you to turn your head like an ape? Someone needs to like yell something threatening over there. We're gonna get you! Did you see it? Did you see that ape face? Did you hear it? I heard it. A deep, it was great. It was great. like, grunt? Ball. Yeah. Wow. I mean, I don't know. I'm, I'm in a gown, so I, I don't know if it's, like, <laughs> selling right now. But it was an incredible experience, yeah. and I'm very excited to see it. All right. So, let's get in the way back machine then. Okay. What advice would you give to a younger version of Sarah Canning just starting out in the industry? Don't try to get things right. Because that was me, um, and I mean, I, I still tend to do that that's carried over into adulthood a little bit. But I always, you know, I, I was sort of afraid of being messy as a, as a teenager. I was very, I was very ambitious and I think I still am, but I, I feel very fortunate in having learned from other amazing industry people around me and, yeah. and just through my own personal journey of what beauty there is in just sort of letting go and being messy and playing and, and letting whatever's going to happen between yourself and the other actors or the, whomever, the cinematographer, the director, just yeah. like letting things organically kind of develop. It's it's an incredible thing that we get to do, I think, and, and just embracing that. It's like, gets my heart pounding, you know? You can tell. Yeah. You can see the fire in your eyes. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Enjoy thank tonight. You. Thank you. Tonight, mm -hmm. Shayla Horsall, you are here as a nominee yeah. for your work on Man in the High Castle. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me about your role on Man in the High Castle? Like, what do you enjoy most about the character that you play? Helen Smith uh, is addicted to pills, so that's really fun. I haven't often been able to do something like that. She's hooked on lewds, so there's everything kind of has this like light pink vibe to it in her mind all the time. So it's always interesting adapting material, reading it, and then adapting it with this uh, filter of just being a little bit detached all of the time. Fabulous, mm -hmm. fabulous. So the show seems particularly relevant in today's highly charged political climate. Mm -hmm. To your knowledge, like how much does the show intentionally draw on what's happening in the in the zeitgeist? Uh, well, we started two and a half years ago, so uh, the idea of uh, producing a show that was about living under fascist rule in North America was completely far flung, and yeah. no one could have imagined that it would become as relevant as mm. it has become. So. Uh, we're very cognizant of trying not to um, not to really have an opinion on the current climate mm -hmm. because it it's not necessarily relevant. I'm I'm going to talk in circles here, and I apologize. It's not necessarily relevant because we are an alternate reality. That's right. So everything that happens in Man of the High Castle, there's there are no ties to our current world. Yeah. So it gives us a lot of freedom. We don't have to to sit by standards that would exist in, in politics today. Yeah. Um, yeah. And yet it's still very resonant for people who are living in America right now and in the new global climate, right? You so, see how hard I'm dancing yeah, around I know, that? you really are. She's doing awesome. I'm very proud of her. I'm trying yeah. not to say, well, hell yeah, but it really, hell yeah. Like, it's, 
it's yeah specifically the last couple of years mm -hmm. what kind of lessons have you learned both as an actor or as a human being having the courage to say no yeah has been huge and it's hard especially as an actor or as an artist of any kind to um when you're a contract worker to turn down anything seems counterintuitive and terrifying it's terrifying there's always that thought of is this the last time I'm gonna work is this the last offer that's gonna come what I have learned through practice mm -hmm. is that saying no to things that don't really light my fire it only creates room and space for really great things to come along if you believe and if you're patient and if you work your ass off to get it you can't just start out going I'm gonna say no to everything well yeah. no you got to earn that I think anyway at least I did yeah. Always love seeing you. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Where else would I be? I know. <laughs> You're beautiful. Benson's. Yes. yes. You. Wow. Wow. <laughs> We're always this cereal. enthusiastic at home, too. Always. <laughs> No. We spent a lot of time together. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So, I mean, as you say, you've worked together on multiple projects. We have. The family. What an idiot. So, how does your off-screen relationship help or hinder the work that you do together on the screen? Ah. I'd love to hear. Well, <laughs> it depends. If it's our project where we're producing, directing, uh, I think we have a, a good shorthand when we're working together creatively um, because we know each other so well. Mm -hmm. um, so that's been really useful in our, uh, yeah, our I mean, own projects. On our own projects, the, the truth is we're both kind of uh, all or nothing. So we're, we're both, when we yeah. are working, we're pretty like on all the time. So we're not great at being like, okay, at five o'clock we won't talk about it anymore. We'll say things like that and then yeah. we're like, but one more thing. But we both love it. We love yeah. it so much. And yeah. if we're coming together on the project, it's kind of like, I don't know. It's what we love to do. So we. Your kids must be getting a lot of training too, yeah. you know, watching well, you guys and acting. They're either going to love making movies or like <laughs> or never want to have anything to do yeah. with it. It's going to go one of two ways. <laughs> okay, so what would people be surprised to learn about Juliet, Peter? Oh. Ooh. No. And you can think about your answer, and okay. I flip it back at you. Well, she's like the most gorgeous woman I've ever met. All was well put together and just lovely and, and perfect looking. But she's kind of messy. As am I. But you'd expect that from me, because look at me. But like you wouldn't expect this elegant, classy, beautiful woman oh. to be a little bit... Not a lot messy. I feel like I asked a, a loaded question. You have opened up such I, a... Yeah. Was it what I was looking for? An so hour later, she's going to be yes like, I, I clean the toilet. Yeah, no. Yeah. Wow. We're, yeah. We're just a little messy. Just a little messy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Julia. Okay. Deep uh -oh. breath. I, you should have gone first. Well, I was going to say... Um, at first, I was going to say how vain you are. <laughs> Everybody knows that. But then I was like, everybody knows that. She's been watching me print for like the last hour. She knows that. That's not a secret. We're supposed to be revealing secrets. <laughs> this one, yeah. Okay, it's well, true. Anyways, I think we better yeah. move on. Yeah. Yeah. We're here with Tammy Gillis, star of Menorca. So how has this experience with Menorca changed you as an actor and a human being? Well, uh, it's really, really been incredible uh, how people have gotten behind and supported the movie. And just unbelievable the things that are happening with it at film festivals around the world. I just found out this morning I won an award for Best Actress at a film festival in France. And having won one in India, which is kind of crazy, for, especially for the content of the movie, um, I've learned so much about what it takes to get an independent film out there and seen. And and what is that? What is that special oh, thing? Man, What's it's just so much formula? work. <laughs> it's so much work and it's yeah. really just sharing your passion with everybody and hoping maybe they're going to get passionate about it too. Yeah. But in terms of acting, acting is it's a tough gig, man. Like yeah. you audition a lot, there's a lot of disappointment, there's a lot of frustration and this movie came along at a time that it really reignited my spark for acting because it scared the crap out of me. It was so challenging, um, but yet after now having talked to people that have seen it, a bunch of people have reached out to me and been like, that was my life. My wow. wife left me and that happened. And that's one of the reasons why I'm a storyteller is we tell stories that, you know, a lot of people don't talk about, and it's amazing that they're coming back to me with that feedback. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, Menorca does present a side of motherhood that we don't normally get the chance to see. Yeah. How has this changed your idea of mothers and of parents, your work on this film, and also the feedback? 
what's really interesting is that I've had a whole bunch of my friends now come forward and be honest with me about their struggles with being a mom. And they're like, yeah, man, there was a time where I didn't think I was going to make it. And I think that's really amazing because it's so it's hidden because moms are embarrassed that they're having a tough time of it. It's like, hello, come on. What I've definitely recognized, I'm not a mom. I'm, I don't have plans to be a mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and that hasn't really changed, but it's really, really made me understand yeah. my friends and even my, my, own, what my own mom went through.